competitive examination. And he'll carry it too. Carry it? Of course he will. He's a parliamentary Pickford. He carries everything. Yes, if you please, that's our fault. But you such is. Yes, we influence the members and compel them to vote just as he wishes them to. It's our system shortens the debates. <laughs> but think what it all means. I don't so much mind for myself, for the House of Peers with no grand fathers worth mentioning, the country must <coughs> go to the dogs. I suppose it must. I don't want to say a word against brains. I have great respect for brains. I often wish I had some myself. But <laughs> the House of Peers composed exclusively of people of intellect, what's to become of the House of Commons? I never thought of that. This comes of women interfering in politics. It so happens if there is an institution in Great Britain that is susceptible of no improvement at all, it is the House of Peers. <laughs>
execute us all. <laughs> no, this is weakness. <laughs> Some do it. We know it's weakness, but the weakness is so strong. <laughs> we are not all as tough as you are. Tough? <laughs> do you suppose that I am insensible to the effect of manly beauty? <laughs> No girl would care for a man who goes around with a 
mother considerably younger than himself. Finish my job! Finish my own! Dare you? How dare you? <laughs> but perhaps you're the two noblemen I'm engaged to. I'm one of them. I'm the other. Oh, then my darling, my own. Have you decided which is to be? Not altogether. It's a difficult situation. It would hardly be delicate to toss up. <laughs> On the whole, we would rather leave it to you. How could it possibly concern me? <laughs> you are both earls. You are both rich. And you are both plain. <laughs> so we are. At least I am. So am I. No, no. Oh, I'm indeed very plain. <laughs> well, well, perhaps you are. <laughs> There's really nothing to choose between you. If one of you would forego his title and distribute his estates among his Irish tenantry, well, then I should see reason for accepting the other. Trundala, <laughs> <laughs> are you prepared to make this sacrifice? No. <laughs> not even to oblige a lady? No, not even to oblige a lady. Well, then the only question is which of us should give way to the other? Perhaps on the whole she would be happier with me. I don't know. I may be wrong. No, I don't know that you are. I really think she would. But the awkward part of it is, if you are to rob me of the girl of my heart, then we must fight. And one of us must die. It's a family tradition that I have sworn to respect. It's a very painful tradition, but I have a very strong regard for you. <laughs> My dear Thomas, you are very dear to me, George. We were boys together, at least I was. <laughs> if I you, my existence would be hopelessly evident. Then you must not do it. I say it again and again, if it will have this effect on you, you must not do it. No, no. If one of us is to destroy the other, let it be me. No, 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 yes, by our boyish friendship, I implore you. Well, well, be it so. But, no, no, I cannot consent to an act which would cross you with unavailing rimmel. But it would not do so. <laughs> I should be very sad at first. Ah, who would not be? But it would wear off. I like you very much, but... Not perhaps as much as you like me. George, you're a noble fellow, but that tell tale tear betrays you. No, George, you are very fond of me, and I cannot consent to give you a week's uneasiness on my head. But dear Thomas, you would not last a week. Remember, you need the house of peers. On your demise, I shall take your place. Oh, Thomas, it would not last a day. No, I don't believe it is, nor I. The sacred ties of friendship are paramount. Love, unrequited.
unrequited robs me of my rest. Love, hopeless love, my heart and soul encumbers. Love, nightmare-like, lies heavy on me chest. Another effort, and if that fails, 
I resign myself to my fate. If you go in, you're sure to win. Yours will be the charming maid. He alone, the ancient song, think of me.
forgot about him. Oh, Mother, none can resist your fairy eloquence. You will go to him and plead for us. No, no, impossible. But our happiness, our very lives, <laughs> a pen to pen upon your obtaining his consent. Madam, you cannot refuse to do this. You know not what you ask. The Lord Chancellor is my husband. Your my husband? husband. Yes. My husband and your father. Well, then our cause is plain. Upon learning that Strephon is his son, all objections to our marriage will be at once removed. Nay, you must never know. He believes me to have died childless, and dearly as I love him, I am bound under penalty of death not to undeceive him. He comes! Victory! Victory! <laughs> Success has crowned my efforts, and I may consider myself engaged to Phyllis. At first I would hear of it. It was out of the question, <laughs> but I took heart. I pointed out to myself that I was no stranger to myself, that, in point of fact, I had been personally acquainted with myself for some years. <laughs> this had its effect. I admitted that I had watched my professional advancement with considerable interest, and I handsomely added that I yielded to no one in admiration for my private and professional virtues. This was a great point gained. I then endeavoured to work upon my feelings, conceive my joy, when I distinctly perceived a tear glistening in my own eye. <laughs> After a severe struggle with myself, I reluctantly, oh, most reluctantly, consented. <laughs>